If you or someone you know has diabetes, you may have built up an excess supply of test strips and lancets. That's where we come in. We'll buy the supplies that you don't need and resell them to those in need to prevent waste. Help us make diabetes management more affordable. Visit us at teststripswithaz.com. All right, we have Ben Saunders on the show. He returns to action next Saturday at UFC 245. He will take on Matt Brown. What a fight that this is going to be. Happy to have Killaby on the show finally. How are you, man? I'm doing great, man. Uh, I got to train earlier this morning, and uh, everything's feeling sharp. So where are you at right now? Where are you, where are you training these days? I'm actually in Las Vegas uh, for this camp. I came out here um, to work with Coach Casey at 10 Planet Las Vegas. And Eddie B, the striking coach, or one of the striking coaches at uh, Extreme Couture, and also the UFC Performance Institute for strength, conditioning, rehabilitation, everything. Clearly, I have not been to the UFC Performance Institute since I am not a well-tuned athlete like yourself. Uh, everything I've heard about it is, is absolutely amazing. Can you can you verify everything I've heard about it? No, it's definitely fantastic. Um, I would say that's been one of the greatest keys uh, leading into this fight is, um, unfortunately, I haven't probably been the best manager for myself uh, in the past. I believe three of my last four fights were four weeks notice or less. And now I got management, but I came out here um, and it was just a big plan because my management, which is Iridium, is friends jason house is friends with casey halstead of template las vegas so them being friends is why i've had terrible uh experience with managers in the past but them being friends is why i trust uh jason and we kind of came to terms with what i feel i need and what i'm looking for and coming out here for the ufc performance institute above all i need i need a good strength and conditioning um coaches to to really push me i needed uh really to work hard on my strength and conditioning outside of the fight camp so we could lead into a fight camp already feeling good and strong and prepared and then just be able to kind of peak it correctly or peak it bring it down and then peak it on point correctly for the fight and on top of that the ufc performance institute the Man, the physical therapy and the strength and conditioning coaches all work together with each other and all work together with my coaches out here. So everybody working together has really kind of built and allowed for one of the uh, the best ways I feel you can kind of collaborate and put together a training camp. It's got to feel good at this point in your career. You know, you've seen it all. You've done it all. We'll, we'll talk about some of that throughout this conversation. But it's got to be kind of freeing knowing that you can just sort of go out there and fight. I mean, you got to get ready, but, you know, you don't have to worry about doing everything yourself. You go out there and execute, and you just have to worry about the fight. Is that accurate? You feel a little bit more freeing heading into this fight than maybe you have in the last few? Uh, it definitely, it definitely, I would, I would agree with that. Um, I've... Or always kind of been my head coach, or at least since like 2000, I'm thinking 2013, 2014, I've been like my real head coach and just kind of just been trying to collaborate and work with other guys. And you always kind of, as an experienced veteran, you're always going to know yourself more than other people are going to know. And you've been in the game, ideally, if you're good and you're smart and you're intelligent and you're kind of really focused on everything that is this sport and is the martial arts, you should be able to understand what you need, what you don't need, what you're looking for. And uh, if you have the correct coaches working with you, the correct teammates and training partners working with you, correct everything, kind of collaborating and working together, that is always going to give you the best outcome in my personal opinion. Uh, and this is going to be the first time I've had uh, a lot of this going in my favor for it's been a long time since I've had this much uh, working in my favor. With all that in play, how are you feeling as we're about a week and a half or so away from this fight? 
better than I've I've felt uh, leading into maybe the past two years. You know, um, I feel like I could probably write a book, maybe even a damn movie on just the past two, two and a half years of my life. Uh, a lot of inside and outside of the cage experience and wisdom and knowledge and just living life story. <laughs> it's just all nuts, man. But um, I, I wouldn't... Uh, I wouldn't change anything. Everything that I've been through and everything that's led to leading into this fight and then the fight itself, uh, I don't believe any of it would probably happen at all, or at least in this way, if anything changed. I truthfully believe it'd be like time travel. You go back in time, you change one thing, and then maybe everything changes, you know? Maybe you blow your knee out or something crazy happens and it's game over a long time ago. So at this point I have no regrets with every mistake and everything I've done right. Um, throughout my life, everything's led to where I am now and I'm very fortunate and happy with, uh, with it all. With everything that, that has led to you sort of growing and getting to this point over these last few years, what do you think the, the biggest lesson you've learned has been, what, the, the biggest change you've made? What would you say is like the, the biggest difference between the Ben Saunders that's in front of us right now to the one from three years ago? Ooh. I would say uh, emotional control. Having... Uh, having, having the experience, the wisdom... And I guess the growth and just being, man, a smarter person. You know, there's a lot of things that, uh, and when I say emotional, I, I, I don't mean like, per se, like bawling and crying. I, I just mean like, man, just how many emotions can you have, right? You can be sad, mad, angry, frustrated, confused. There's just so many emotions that go on in the human being. And I feel that, uh, Understanding how to control my emotions under any circumstance is far from perfected, but it is so much better than it has been in the past. And uh, when it comes to the fight game, man, I think controlled aggression is my strongest um, asset. And if I can utilize it correctly in a fight, there's no way you're going to beat me. So this is going to be your 19th fight in the UFC, your 37th professional fight overall, and you continue to learn these these lessons and, and you grow in all these different ways. With all that being said, with everything we've talked about to this point so far, does this like does this feel different? Does this fight feel different than than, than fights that you've had in the past? Like I know the training and, and some of the things you did in preparation are a little bit different than you've been used to over the last few, but does the the mentality as we're a week and a half away from this fight does it feel different than than it has in the past? I would say no. I would say no. The only, well, man, the biggest difference is the attention that I'm getting from this fight, the opportunity to get this fight and be able to test myself against someone like Matt Brown. Um, it brings a lot of joy. It, it, it definitely brings a lot of positivity. If you're talking emotions in that state because Man, like I said, I've been grinding and working my ass off for so long. And it's just so awesome when everything kind of aligns and you get these fantastic opportunities. Because my plan is to go out there and steal the show with Matt Brown. That entire card is absolute fire. It's amazing. But my plan is to go out there and steal the show. I'm looking to create a highlight reel. I'm looking to if possible, show the world some techniques and stuff that they've never seen before. You know, with the amount of time you and Matt ha have both been around in the UFC, it's a little surprising that you guys haven't crossed paths before. I mean, with the, especially with today, like the ever-expanding roster, all these guys getting signed, like in all these different ways, the roster continues to expand, like all these different cards that need to be filled. When you saw Matt's name on the other side of that contract, were you surprised to see that? Uh, no, it was actually... It was my management, you know, asking me if if uh, if I was good to go for the fight um, against Matt Brown on that date. And immediately, there's no hesitation. 
there's no hesitation for me almost any time. So when I get an opportunity like that where I'm like, wait a minute, I actually get a full training camp for this one <laughs> and against Matt Brown? Oh, damn. I'm stoked. I'm super motivated. I mean, unfortunately, and this is – and they can take it as they want, man, but um, being such a veteran in this sport, it takes – a name like Matt Brown to to really get me super fired up and motivated. I mean, I'm always motivated. I'm always going to be a hard worker and I'm always wanting to, you know, create works of art inside that octagon and, and, and show some artistic brilliance out there. But when I get a name like that on a card like this, not short notice and enough time for a full training camp after I've already been doing strength and conditioning and grinding and getting that preparation, the pre-camp preparations in. I can't wait to see what I'm able to pull off. The stars are aligning. Is that accurate? Everything's, everything's that coming is, up uh, Ben Saunders right now. Yes, 100%. So it, it's been over two years since we've seen Matt compete in the octagon. I mean, he had that incredible knockout against Diego Sanchez, one of the best knockouts of 2017. But, you know, sort of like we touched on, there, there's very few things that can happen in a fight that you haven't seen before. But is it, in a way, a little more difficult preparing for a guy that hasn't fought in two years, especially someone like, like a Matt Brown? Or is it sort of business as usual for you in preparation for this thing? I would definitely say it's business as usual. You know, if anything, maybe it's, I don't like to kind of think or put my mind into my opponent's head because that seems counterproductive. Like, I don't know what the hell's going on in his head. Like, it could be like, oh, man, two years, he could be dealing with that in his head. Like, damn, it's been a long time. Or he could have done everything correctly and spent those two years to get himself. Maybe he was burnt out, you know. Maybe he needed to take a break because that happens you know with with anything that we do in life people get burnt burnt out over it um so my mentality is i'm hoping it's the best the best matt brown to date i'm hoping that he's coming in super healed up super prepared and this way when i get my victory against him it is without question a victory over the best matt brown as opposed to crossing my fingers oh uh you know I, I i hope that the stars align even more in my favor so the percentages go more in my favor against him no i'm a samurai you know i want i want to fight the best i want me to be the best to verse his best and i want to come out on top like you said burnout is a real thing no matter what you do you could be you know just in the media interviewing fighters you can get burnt out you, obviously you guys can experience burnout with all the stuff that you guys do day in and day out what do you do to to keep yourself from burning out and if you get to that point what do you do to sort of turn that around um well unfortunately i feel our time is so limited in this sport you know, I, I'm so ridiculously blessed to have been able to be in this game for almost 16 years and still doing it at the highest level. Like, that's what motivates me, and that's why I'm not burned out. I'm just super stoked to still be here and still be able to fight. Um, again, that's why I was even taking fights short notice because in my head I'm like, well, one, I'm not the greatest manager for myself. That's why I got – Iridium Sports now with uh, Jason House running that side because I, I jump on anything and everything that was thrown at me because um, of my mentality. I'm like, dude, I, I, could get, I, I could get injured or you could do an entire eight week training camp and then something happens and then you're injured and you have to pull out like in my head. If I'm healthy enough to fight, even if I'm not in fight shape and like peak performance ready like if i'm able to fight i'm like dude i gotta get it in let's do this like i, I like i'm not thinking about uh the what ifs or the could have been i'm like yo let's go all in i, I i'm a gamer i'm 100 percent. and um so for me i would i would just definitely say that uh as far as being burnt out you need to just listen to your body i think Mental burnout can happen, but just find, man, find hobbies that uh, would be outside of fighting. And for me, 
it's been for the past little while has been uh, video and photography. Like I think those are two things, two hobbies that are fun to kind of play with. But finding things, video games are fun and still kind of keep you sharp and have to, uh, you know, keep your hand and eye coordination on point and making you think. Uh, I like learning stuff. Uh, there, there's just a lot of things that I, I think you can do in your downtime while you're recovering. Um, but on a physical level, if you get burnt out physically, you need to listen to your body. And that just means you need to take a day, two days, three days, however long it takes. If it's not injury related, it's just muscle related. You know, take as many days off that you need to get that correct recovery. But um, everybody's going to be different. Definitely listen to yourself. But for all those people that, you know, think they can come in this game and uh, still take vacations and party and drink and do all these things, dude, just understand you are lucky if your career lasts three to five years. Like, that's a blessing. And to go further than that, hopefully you're taking care of yourself. And, you know, for me, vitality and longevity for not only the sport and my career, but for life and wanting to do martial arts and teach martial arts till I die. Um, it's, it was kind of a no brainer. I, I, I do what I love, so I'm not really burnt out from it. Well, that's great to hear. Um, in terms of your in competition life in the cage, it's, it's been a tough go for you as of late with the three straight losses and the five out of six, but you do get a chance. You're in a fight that everybody's excited about. You get a chance to right the wrong a little bit with this fight against Matt Brown next Saturday. And, and, and from the, the thousands of interviews that done at this point, like I know every fight is a must win, but do you feel like this is a true must win for you? Like that this could be your last chance to make something happen here? No, because I think that's ridiculous pressure to put on yourself. I know for a fact how good I am, where my skill set is, uh, what I'm capable of. So I know that it's not going to be the end, you know, like, well, I damn sure need to be not thinking about any weird career ending accidents and injuries that it could occur because that's just negative and doesn't really help anybody. All it does is bring uh, additional stress into your life that is pretty, uh, pretty pointless. So that's always been like since day one, man, since I got in this game, but more than anything, since 18 and really at 18 lying to my parents and saying, Oh, I'm going to go to Orlando to uh, go to college. And it was really just because Orlando had United champions with Dean Thomas. And it was the only MMA place in Florida to go train. So I lied to go there. And I told myself, I was like, man, I, I had points where I, my entire family was against me. My car broke down. I lost my job. I was about to get evicted. And they're like, what are you doing? Like, you're not going to college. What is this fighting thing? And like, they were super negative. I, I kind of had to stop talking to them till, um, till I was able to kind of prove that what I'm doing isn't pointless. But in my head, I was like, thinking about the what ifs and the could ifs, that doesn't make sense to me. Like I'm going all in right now because if something happens, I can always go back to college. You know, like I can always find something that's not my passion, not my love and not my dreams um, later in life once I hit that crossroads. But I've been so lucky, so fortunate to, uh, again, be able to do this, that I see no reason to change my mentality on how I look at life, my career and fighting. So for me, it's just another it's just another fight. It just happens to be one that I'm super excited and motivated to go out there and show everybody what's up. How do you show people what's up? How do you see this all playing out next Saturday between you and Matt Brown? What is going to happen? What is up, Ben Saunders? Man, I if I told you everything that was going on in my <laughs> head, half the time you'd be like, damn, there's no way. And I'll be like, wait, just wait. Watch it. Just watch. Um, but I think my... Skill set, my record uh, kind of speak for themselves. I can beat you standing. I can beat you uh, from a distance. I can beat you with kicks, punches from the clinch, takedowns, ground and pound, and submission. So I am a true jack of all trades. I am a true mixed martial artist. I come from Bruce Lee's Jeet Kune Do. 
The reason I've been able to be so ahead of the game and involved with the game so well is because of my background in Bruce Lee's Jeet Kune Do, take what's useful, discard what's useless, and create what's essentially your own. There was no an all masterful style system or technique. It was learn everything because, man, whether you use it, need to defend against it, or later in life have it in your 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 knowledge to teach to others that will find it beneficial it's all going to be good so every single fight's kind of been that way too no matter what happens in a fight i'm learning so many different things and to me it's not a loss if i yeah you could say it's not a loss if you learn yes i love that that's a fantastic way to look at things but in my head is as long as you never lose the same weight twice it wasn't a loss because you clearly learned something from that. You clearly adapted and changed and are aware of certain dangers that you either weren't aware of before or maybe made, made the mistakes to allow them to occur. Do you feel like that mentality that, that you bring to the table that you've been talking about throughout this whole thing, do you feel like this next generation of up-and-coming fighters, do you feel like they, they live that same martial arts mentality that, that say, you and a Matt Brown and, and guys from that era that continue to, to plug away and keep doing the damn thing? Do you feel like some of these guys and gals are, are living that same mentality, or do you think they, they have some things to learn as they progress through the sport? Uh, I can't speak for everybody because I don't really know anybody else that I, uh, I or tons of people in this game I don't personally know to really know their points of view and where they're coming from. But I will say these young guns coming up, you guys are getting such a sugar-coated version. There was no blueprint for us. We had no clue what we were doing. So, I mean, I, th I think without a doubt we had the harder – route in the game and now you guys are you should be able to uh get extremely talented and skilled and understand a lot of the necessities that are needed way faster than we did coming up i was just very fortunate that i was ahead of the game and i was in the game so young that i came up with the pioneers so i'm kind of in this weird where I'm partially a pioneer as well, but uh, I'm still old, but I'm still young in comparison. So I don't know. Like, I truly 100% believe factual, without a doubt, I'm one of a kind. There is nobody that saw the first UFC live on pay-per-view at 10 years old, looked at their best friend and said, that's what I want to do. He said, you're crazy. And I said, watch me. No one. Zero people in this world has ever had that as their origin story of how they got into this game, let alone that was their origin story and actually are here now doing it at the highest level. I mean, yeah, I just I, I think I, I hopefully I can help inspire the younger, you know, group and clan that are coming up and everybody. uh and I definitely will have tons of wisdom and knowledge and experience to uh, pass down. I think you should write that book. I don't know if you were if you were being serious about that, but I, I think I think you should. I think you do have a lot of of knowledge and wisdom, especially since the sport continues to evolve. I mean, look at look look at where it is now. It's on ESPN. This is huge. And now, you know, you have fighters coming in to train jujitsu at like six, seven, eight years old with the same mentality that they're going to be fighters. Like it's crazy. Maybe you could write a book. Is that something you actually think about? Oh, yeah, big time. You know, because I, I have a lot of things that I just keep <clears throat> putting on the back burner. Like, uh, I do like uh, Evernote because it allows me to kind of go between computer, cell phone, or tablet, or whatever. But, I mean, I have so much ridiculous stuff and, and that, I, that I just jot down. And uh, actually too much stuff because eventually I'm going to go through it and try to organize it all and like put it together. But, um, eventually I will. And, and for sure, I think, I think a, uh, a book of some kind, uh, will, will probably be in my future. 
I love that. And the next chapter of that book is going to be written next Saturday at UFC 245. Ben Saunders versus Matt Brown. A fight that I can't believe has not happened yet is finally going to happen. I'm very excited for this fight. It's going to be a great card and a, and a great table setter for the three title fights. No doubt about that as you guys look to steal the show next Saturday in Las Vegas. Uh, thank you for the time, Ben. It's been uh, an honor and a, and a great time chatting with you. I could do this for another hour. Uh, but before we let you go, man, let the folks know where they can find and follow you on the web. Uh, any shout outs, anything else you want to get off your chest? The floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, anybody that wants to follow me on social media, my tag is at Ben Saunders MMA. I do it. I run it all myself. Uh, I do my best to uh, reply to everybody, DMs and everything. Um, I'm a, probably the biggest fan of Instagram out of all of them right now, but I still uh, collaborate and do everything. I would like to thank um, Thrive and Garden of Life. I would like to thank Fuji, some of the best gear in the world. And I would like to thank, uh, man, 10 Planet, um, Las Vegas, Coach Casey, Eddie B, everyone at the USCPI, hell, Dana White, Sean Shelby, you name it. Matt Brown, thank you for taking the fight, son. I'm going to put on a show. Very excited for this. Thank you for the time, Ben. I know you got a couple more interviews to do, so I'll, I'll let you go, man. All the best to you next Saturday in Las Vegas. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you.